we're live at the MSS San Diego and we're talking MSS of the future. On our panel, we are delighted to welcome Tanya Waters, Consulting Security Engineer at WWT, Lionel Cortez, Chief Technology Officer at Infolock Technologies, Yanai Marinkovic, CISO at Tirosec, Mark Matei, Global Director, Industrial Cybersecurity for Managed Security Services, 1898 and Co., and JJ Powell, Virtual CISO at the Cyber Defense Group. Lovely to have you on. I've seen at least one of you last week in person, which was great fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is this is this is nice. And welcome to San Diego. So so we, we, we're talking MSS of tomorrow. We've looked at uh, XDR, EDR, and we've also looked at who might lead it and, and and sort of skills behind it. But but let's take a step back. And and perhaps this would have been a question for the very first uh, opening remarks in today's event. Um, l- let me start with you, uh, Janai, and and then I'll work my way around. Give us a flavor of the changing landscape that the MSS is even trying to grapple with. Um, you know, set set the scene that we're, we're sort of trying to respond to. Sure, sure. And if it's okay, I'd like to take it, uh, you know, even a little bit step further in talking about the emergent technologies that are not going to be emergent within the next couple of weeks, right? And that is, um, you know, we want to, there's, there's several things that are happening right now. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, more and more of a, prolifer- a proliferation of algorithms. And we haven't actually deployed a way um, of, uh, you know, how do we detect an attack against an algorithm and thinking systems? You know, so there's some, uh, you know, issues that we've got there. Uh, Metaverse is a big one, uh, you know, because, and that's where we tend to specialize in Gracie, uh, our our nonprofit, is we focus on um, areas where, um, uh, you know, in Metaverse. So we train all of our students, we train everybody everybody in Metaverse, you know, you have to look at the attacks that happen within it and and Metaverse. And here's the big one, how do you design a security operations center, um, you know, in Metaverse so that you can ultimately scale to be able to do those types of things. So those are the areas that we're focusing on. And then there's one other big area and that's on the end users and threat intelligence. So when we look at the way that we instrument an ecosystem, we tend to focus on, uh, you know, not on the human element itself, not on, as an example, the consumer. And so there's a lot of attacks. There's a lot of ways that you measure and analyze risk and threat on a human that we're not actually calculating as part of our risk assessments and bringing into, you know, the analysis for the MSSP of the future, you know, so how do we include the human element as what we're doing? So for, for the three things that we're looking at, we're looking at, um, you know, hey, how are we actually instrumenting, measuring, monitoring, and protecting algorithms and thinking systems? How do we operate an MSSP of the future inside a metaverse environment? And how do you start capturing the data so that the humans are being instrumented and monitored the same way that we monitor machines? So those are three big things that we're looking at. Okay, and and, and now that's great futurology. You know, people are always saying what's next and not everyone is up for saying it. So so, so that's that's really important to, to sort of paint the picture. Um, Mark, uh, w- what about, recently what's what what's the threat landscape sort of been like for the mss because obviously yes maybe they they're going to end up looking after immutable digital identities maybe they'll look you know as jenna says after algorithms in the metaverse but but what have you seen you know these last couple of years um with the great reopening yeah no i i'll uh, i guess i'll jump, jump right off from what steve talked about with uh, stellar cyber and what they're doing ready um the cloud is not just uh, uh, something that's there. Threats are actually building exploits and, and looking to the cloud as an avenue of approach to get into to companies. Um, the other thing that's that's recent, of course, is the uh, the Russian uh, attacks on Ukraine have launched a whole new threat landscape of those threats focused on industrial uh, cybersecurity and, and those types of uh, threats. Right. So you know, if, even starting all the way back. In, 2011 with Stuxnet, over the last 10 years, the the threats to critical infrastructure have just grown tremendously, tremendously, right? So, um, I mean, you can think of the, you know, the recent ones, Colonial Pipeline, the Oldsmar Water um, uh, attacks, um, that's something that those folks are basically um, really worried about, right? And CISA uh, launched their um, Shields Up program. Uh, to try and make sure that everybody starts thinking about protection. Uh, there's things like that like even the EPA has done 
um, with the water systems and making sure that uh, critical infrastructure is protected there. So I think that's a, a big area that is virtually unprotected, right? A lot of small water utilities don't have any resources, right? They're, they're looking at one IT uh, person, you know, a, a town water company has one IT person, never mind trying to protect and do security for their entire water system and, and those type of things. So um, that, that's an area that's growing. And of course, the, you know, the talent shortage um, just leads to managed security, basically taking over that area and looking at how to do the protection for that. Indeed. And, and, and that's, that's another area, isn't it? OT, you know, and then the, the emergence of the MSS that looks after IT and OT or IT or OT. And, and that's another debate, though. And we are going to get on to a sector specific panel at the very end. So I like that you brought that up. Um, Lionel, welcome. Last time I saw you, you very kindly joined our MSS Puerto Rico forum. I, I know you do a lot of collaboration between California and other states. Um, it, you know, let, let's take this question of, you know, the landscape and and, and move it forward. Do you, do you think that because of the threat landscape that we've been elaborating, the argument has just gotten easier for managed security? Um, I would say that, uh, yes. And I think that we all actually have pointed some elements that uh, uh, basically makes us realize that the advantages of having an MSSP in place, at least from like the CISO perspective. In the past, actually, I spoke about scalability being one of the biggest factors that I see that is becoming incredibly important on adopting these type of services, right? Uh, if you take a look at the current uh, footprint of attacks out there, I think that we are in a point where we, we have come to the realization that it's no longer the big companies, the only ones that are targets. But then how many small and medium-sized businesses have really the capability to staff up in order to provide their companies with the acceptable level of security? Uh, very few. Uh, just putting it this way, how many FTEs do you need actually to provide a 24 by 7 just monitoring uh, environment in place? It, if what your business is about is just to, you know, create, fabricate diapers, you will not actually allocate enough money just to um, put like, uh, 12, 13, 20 individuals monitoring a, a bunch of systems, right? On top of all of that, and uh, alluding a little bit to something that was mentioned, right? With the introduction of the cloud uh, uh, facilitation and collaboration solutions out there, right? And with the whole COVID uh, uh, situation that we have experienced for the past several years, that probably accelerated the adoption of breaking the boundaries of what we consider networks for like 10 years. What before was just like monitoring a firewall, now it has become monitoring like 12, 13, 14 different applications in the cloud where the most important portion of it is the user behavior, right? And that user behavior is, is a wealth of data, which, which I think even, you know, Stephen uh, mm -hmm. mentioned, mentioned before. Um, what, 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 let, let, let's move to, go, go, go forward with that. Tanya, are you still there? That's right. What, what, whilst, whilst Tanya comes back, um, JJ, welcome. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, obviously, you, you come from a, a, even a slightly more different uh, perspective because as, as, a, as a virtual CISO, you're sort of tasked with bringing you know, lots of interesting uh, knowledge and, and, and leadership to, to new roles. And often, you know, I can imagine you, you come into a situation where you know, something has already happened, therefore they need you. Um, how, how, how do you see the role of the virtual CISO within the MSS uh, working out? Uh, is, is, it, is it more on tap or is it more um, you know, remediating? Uh, I see both. Uh, incidents often lead to engagements, but more and more, uh, it's pressure from outside organizations like vendors that they do business with uh, or their their board or their investments that are generally pushing uh, for the engagement. Um, yeah, even, um, and, and to bef mentioning before, like even with the, the scaling, you're seeing a lot more uh, offerings cater to uh, say VCSOs or MSSPs to where they can, you can white label a lot of those services as well. Um, that's a huge piece I'm seeing out there as well. And do you think that, 
you know, we might you know, we might not even have to have a panel like this in in a couple of years because the ROI will just be so clear. Um, uh, I, I know we'll we we'll get onto the shape of the MSS, but 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 the actual fundamentals and over the last two years, JJ, what what, what do you think? Is the I, ROI just absolutely uh, given now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, as mentioned before, the the staffing shortages are it, it's real. I mean, people can't organizations can't find people to hire. Um, you know, SMBs can't afford uh, a CISO. And so they're really leaning on uh, consultants, MSSPs, VCSOs to help them build their, as a stopgap in a way, until they get large enough to where they can afford, you know, a dedicated security team or uh, their own security leadership. Um, I think, especially tier one analysts, uh, that's going to be outsourced MSSPs as a standard, I think. Uh, I think organizations are a lot more open to giving up some of that control and allowing their logs to be with someone else uh, for that assistance. I mean, they they just can't hire enough people or keep enough people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that tier one support is is critical. Okay, so 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 building on that, and Tanya, can can you hear me? No, Tanya is uh, is frozen. But Tanya had a good thing to say about uh, VARs earlier. I, I I do remember. So we come we'll come back to that. Um, Janai, So if the R ROI is well established, right? What what do we see this MSS evolving into? Now, obviously, you know MSS operating within the metaverse. You know, what do you, do you need a Roblox um, MSS? Do you need a Meta MSS? Do you need a uh, decentralized MSS? You know, uh, I, I can see that maybe being a question. But um, what what do you think they're going to offer that they're not offering now? Sure. So you're, and I think somebody was already kind of alluding to this or had stated it. You you have to, um, especially for targeting like the small and medium sized uh, business market, you're going to have to outsource quite a bit. You know, so part of your GRC, as an example, is something that has to be outsourced. Um, and one of the problems that we have with MSSPs is that in order to really, really, really build effective defense patterns, you have to have really, really amazing risk assessments. Um, the risk assessments tell you exactly what kind of patterns to build. And the problem is, is that oftentimes we'll use machine learning, right, to, to try and figure out patterns. But to really, really do it, you need to map out that attack step by step by step, right, um, from beginning to end and identify the preventative and the detective control and then build the patterns from there so that they're highly specific to that company, to that threat. Well, that is resource intensive. Uh, and you know who's actually like really well situated to do that work? junior people. And the problem that we have right now, um, and AGGI, you were talking about this, is that uh, we have almost a million jobs at this point open. Uh, we have a lot of people who want to get into the industry. We can't bring them on board because it takes six to seven months to train them, to get them ready. Uh, and uh, for people who are already resource constrained, having to now train that junior person, you've just made their lives harder. You know, so we have not as an industry yet tackled how do we take people from disparate industries and rapidly reskill them so that they can get into these positions that we're not going to be able to automate for a bit. Like I said, the, the, the tie between GRC and when we start to get into true cybersecurity, that's, that's not effective right now, which means that our defense patterns are going to ultimately be off. So, so getting people in there to be able to do that kind of work um, is, uh, is, 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 a, is a barrier, you know, so we've got to work on that. And I'm really glad you mentioned the mentorship and uh, question, because often we all, we all say mentorship, wonderful, it's amazing, we, we should all do it. Yes, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we have sometimes on our engineering panels had engineers saying, well, hang on, I'm working 500 hours a week. And now you want me to skill someone up from zero to hero. <laughs> Like, you know, it's tricky. Um, but anyway, taking a step back, Tanya, I was going to ask you about the VAR and, and the role of the VAR in uh, either pushing or pulling the MSS of the future. How, how do you see the VAR shaping the MSS? Thank you. And I'm sorry for being the great disappearing woman. Brand new laptop and it just keeps flitting out on me. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, I, uh, as someone who works for a systems integrator slash, you know, VAR-ish, um, we do a lot of work with partners. Um, 
I think that over time, uh, we're actually going to be pushing more, uh, more business to the MSS and MSSPs of the world. Um, if I look at, we were talking ROI a minute ago, uh, if I look at just some quick back of the napkin ROI uh, numbers, um, it's, it's going to take about $800,000 to fully staff a, uh, a SOC, you know, just to support a SIM. And uh, if you do that with, uh, with staffing, you could do that with about 200K. So uh, the numbers there just pretty much speak for themselves. And as things get more and more complicated, so we've brought up some things like IoT, uh, the metaverse, <laughs> thank you for, for bringing that one up. Um, there's also, I mean, we're going to run into quantum computing. Um, um, all of the challenges with that, because that's a whole nother sphere and staffing problems across the, just across the board and across the globe. Um, no one company, no one group, and, and no matter how large they are, um, is going to have the capabilities of doing it all on their own. Um, personally, I support some very, very large customers um, who initially thought that they could take care of everything themselves, but then we started talking to them about their security needs. Turns out they didn't even know where their assets were, let alone what to do with them. So if we take a step even further back and say, okay, well, before you can protect your stuff, you need to know what you have. So let's start talking about identifying things. And then we can talk about risk and asset management and GRC and as well as all of the other solutions. Again, we're, no one has the time, the capability or the money of doing it all on their own. So I think that partners and specifically MSS, MSSP partners are just going to become that much more important in the future but they may become that much more specialized as well i i, I like that because again that will be a flavor later on you know people talk a lot about breaking down silos however silos can be good you know silos of expertise it doesn't mean you have to have communication uh, silos anyway yeah. we'll get on to that um mark uh, obviously i know you 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 have your fingers in ot as well as it um what what does that sort of mean to I don't, I don't know, breaking down barriers. I know just talks about silos and that, but what, what, does that, what does that do to the shape of the MSS of tomorrow? Yeah, no, so I'll, I guess, I'll, again, I'll jump right off of Tanya's comment, right? So the, when you look at the assessments and um, a, as mentioned before, right, what, what is actually out there from an asset standpoint, um, the, the MSSs of the future are going to have to look at some, some niche things, right? Um, uh, like uh, things like, you know, asset management, right, as a service um, for these critical infrastructure providers, right? A lot of them don't even know where their assets are. So you got to start with that and getting visibility of what your assets are, going through the whole gamut of, okay, uh, vulnerability management from a patch status, but, uh, but not just that, but vulnerability management from a configuration status, because these, these OT or ICS, this critical infrastructure networks, weren't built for security. They weren't built recently. They're, they're years, um, decades old um, architectures that have to be looked at. At you know, plant managers, asset owners are getting their advice from OEM providers like Rockwell and Siemens, and you know those those type of of asset. Uh, providers that do the automation stuff, but they're not looking at it from a security architecture standpoint. So building in that architecture, understanding where the visibility is, and then having some focus things, right? Because the, the, the local um, uh, pipeline company or water company or gas company that they're afraid of, and they're getting the questions about, okay, can you protect against ransomware? Things, things like that. So there'll be some niche uh, market and niche services like backups to support ransomware or even just a ransomware protection as a service um, for those type of things. And then that translates into um, what is really um, an issue nowadays is insurance for these type of organizations for cyber insurance is skyrocketing uh, because of the last few years of all the attacks that are happening. They can't even afford the insurance, never mind afford a security program. Uh, to support that. So the, the, as mentioned, the return on investment of a managed security provider providing things that are focused on what their specific needs are. Um, never mind, uh, there's, of, of course, we know MDR and EDR have a specific return on investment that basically is known now, uh, but getting the return on investment of the, the items that they're truly worried about of, you know, the, the pipeline is held ransom and 
you can't get any gas from the uh, the northeast to the south, right? Those type of things is, is what MSSs are going to have to look at. Okay, so that so that's interesting because then we have to balance being specialized like an OEM uh, with being able to follow a threat. So so Lionel, um, I think not every MSP will wake up one morning and say, I'm going to be an MSS, but do you know, not just an MSS, I'm going to be an OT MSS. And, and maybe that transition now is, is a bit more um, fractional. So, so, so how, how do we develop the MSS of tomorrow that necessarily might have to hunt threats across verticals uh, through a, a legalese, through OT, through IT, through uh, maybe the metaverse, right? But at the same time, I don't know, is that, is that for one MSS or, or do you see MSS collaboration, Lionel? I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Oh, now that's a very interesting point because um, actually in the my, my current company, we are kind of like dabbling around that those waters as well. We initiated first as a data loss prevention uh, integrator and consultant firm, right? And then we evolved into doing managed services uh, in particular for data loss prevention at the beginning, because we saw that need out there, right? Uh, most of the current MSSPs, uh, basically they focus a lot on threat protection. And that's that's actually, it's something that will never ever gonna go away. We need to be aware of what is out there in terms of threats. We need to prepare. We need to put the necessary processes and procedures to, uh, to address these situations. However, and I, some of you already make this point, visibility is key in order for us to effectively put any sort of MSSP strategy in front of a customer, right? And as uh, Stania basically very accurately point out, most of our customers don't even necessarily know what they have in terms of their uh, information assets. So a launcher answer, I would say that is key for any MSSP within the next five to 10 years to integrate as much of these elements of data analysis to provide their customers with a very comprehensive, very holistic um, visuals of what their situations are. Okay, that 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 would be that be really interesting. Maybe maybe even the value added MSS, which is it's not quite a VAR, not quite an MSS. I don't know, JJ. What what do you think then? Would that remove roadblocks to customer MSS success because? The MSS would be mainly, well, not mainly, but they would be initially charged with visibility. And and then you can start to plug gaps and, 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 and offer solutions. Yeah, absolutely. Visibility is almost always the first step, even if the, the client doesn't know it. Um, oftentimes, you know, we'll come into an organization and um, they're like, oh, yeah, we can pull up assets on this spreadsheet or we can look up things here or we can find it in this space. But ultimately, there's no centralized location. There's no source of truth. Um, there's lots of blind spots. And when those get pointed out, uh, that's that kind of brings things back to one, which is knowing what you have and getting that in place first. And then, as others said, that's how you can build your risk from there. Uh, you know, if you don't know what you have, you you can't really plan risk appropriately. Um, and, you know, in the MSSP space, you're even seeing offerings now to where um they work like asset management companies work with MSSPs because they know that that's one of the best ways to uh, make sure their product is successful is allow MSP, MSSP to manage their solution for the client. Um, you know, and there's so much value there. I'm seeing that across the board. And, and, and JJ, in terms of value, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be interested, maybe maybe not as far down the line as the metaverse, although that could be closer than we think. You never know, right? Um, it is. <laughs> what, what, what do you see the MSS bundling that we might be surprised about? Some people in the past, for example, have said uh, a PR firm, you'll bundle reputation management as well. Um, what, what, what do you think we might be surprised about? I think insurance offerings. I think you're seeing a lot of the insurance companies partner with MSSPs and either do an assessment on the front end or say as part of us providing coverage and finding appropriate premiums, you know, can you go in and do an assessment for this organization? And it, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, I think you'll start seeing a lot more insurance offerings come bundled with MSSP services or vice versa, where MSSPs can then also offer 
insurance once they meet certain requirements for their clients. Love it. And Matt uh, in the audience uh, agrees with you. He says many insurers are dying to get real actuarial data, much mm-hmm. like those telemetry devices in cars um, and being able to create a class of insurers. Um, all right, then, 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 then let's put it to Tanya. Tanya, what, if you're, if you're a VAR, what about the R? What's next that you're going to resell? Well, not you, but you know, generally, what 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 are the, what are people going to resell? We're gonna we're gonna have maybe bundling of insurance. We might have um, PR. I added that one, but you know, feel free to disagree with it. W- what else do, do do you think we'll bundle? That is a really good question. Um, and people is was my first thought. Mm-hmm. Um, not just as staffing services, because there are a lot of staffing services out there that, that just throw humans at things, but <laughs> strategic staffing, um, being able to provide somebody with a specific skill set uh, to address a specific problem or a group of people, that might be uh, the next interim step. Um, and not even necessarily having uh, uh, 1099 people, because that's, you know, that's uh, a a little less stable was kind of where I was going with my, my thinking there. Uh, W-2 employees that would be set on a specific, uh, in a specific environment to address a specific problem. Um, and, and something in between like a professional services engagement and, uh, and just pure staffing is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, now, I know that's a little bit of a weird tightrope because a lot of companies already have one or the other. Um, but being able to provide our customers with some stability um, in terms of individuals with the skill set that they need in order to address the problems that they have, I think that's going to become increasingly important, um, especially as the MSSs and the MSSPs of the world uh, start to ramp up and become more specialized. Um, we are, I think we are going to end up with a whole bunch of silos um, and uh, we're probably going to need a lot of those junior people to do all that stuff that isn't quite automated yet. So that would be, you know, a kind of a specialized offering there. Um, we may need people who have um, a higher degree of experience and insight to be able to go into a customer and very gently say, you don't really have a CMDB. You think you do, but you don't. So let's look at asset identification. Um, we might be providing people that have uh, specific training in threat intelligence. So instead of having offerings where we're selling software and then trying to staff with professional services, I think we're going to be leading more with people. Leading with people. I think I think that's good. People people on this call will will chime up. You know, they're all people. So, <laughs> um, uh, Janai, um, I, I guess then. Where, where should we then take an event such as this? You know, at, at the end of today, what 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 do you hope or what do you think people should hope to have come away with? Uh, sure, uh, threats obviously are going to continue to uh, expand and amplify in a way that is difficult for us to predict because we're looking at not just operational technology systems, we're looking at systems that are embedded in biological systems, we're looking at sensor-based systems, all of that together is expanding. Let's not even bring space into the picture, right? Um, Expanding the world that ultimately needs to be protected and defended. And the problem is, is that, and now, now let's look at consumers, right? Because to me, that's where things start to really blow up. It's not necessarily signing up more small and medium sized businesses. It's that consumers suffer the same impact that companies do, right? They lose hundreds of thousands of dollars to, uh, you know, to external attackers. Actually, if you do a th- um, a, an application inventory on a person, They have more applications than a company has, right? So absolutely. And so if you start looking at, hey, I'm going to have to um, offer a managed security services providing to, you know, actual people, uh, that expands the, you know, as as well. And so to me, it's like, I always want to take things to the natural progression. We don't have enough people now. We don't have enough systems now. The, you know, world is is growing. How, How do we get from here to there pretty quickly? Um, And one is there has to be, I hope this comes out, a massive effort to try and train junior people into the industry. 
and a massive effort to train uh, 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 people who've been in the industry for a couple of years into midlife and midline management positions, right? It's not just about junior people. It's that we don't train managers and we don't train senior managers and executives as well. So it's a massive effort so that we can get more people, you know, in to ultimately solve the problem. And then how do you scale these systems? You know, how do you do this in a way that you can, you know, you can uh, uh, analyze the number of systems that, you know, we're going to be dealing with. And that's why I keep going towards things like metaverse. And then, you know, AI for me falls along that. And I start getting worried because we don't necessarily put the right security controls around thinking systems as well. And when we talk about metaverse, or we talk about autonomous vehicles, you're talking about things that can actually hurt people, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, you've got that right. So for me, it's that the world is growing faster. Uh, we can't keep trying to chip away at the problem. We've got to do it in a very massive way um, and, uh, and upskill and train our, our workforces um, and have systems that can capably scale to deal with those kinds of problems. And, and I suppose now we have that wonderful opportunity, let's say 30, 40 years ago, we could have done it with OT had we known, maybe. And now we're, we have the opportunity for the new, the new infrastructure. Uh, but obviously I'm just, you know, imagining things. Um, right. Conscious of time. I think, I think I've got to draw it to a close. Unfortunately, it is, it is, it is a shame because I think this panel can go on. Um, Mark, Lionel, JJ, Tanya, and Janai, thank you for being such great panelists. I, I, I know this is but a, a scene setter for what the MSS can be, but, I, but, I, but I really appreciate it. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I hope you'll stay with us uh, in the audience. Um, a big, a big virtual round of applause and, uh, I will I will see you very soon.